Welcome to Holly Rock Farm, Kitchen Edition. I'm Jesse Cannon, and today I'm gonna to show you how I do steaks, even though it might cost me some friends that stop coming over for dinner when they can do it themselves. Let's go. So what I've got here are some strip steaks. Uh, and this is just because I'm gonna eat these probably through the week because I want to. And for this evening, I got myself a porterhouse because it's a porterhouse. So we're gonna go ahead and season these up. I am very basic with my seasonings. I use salt and I use black pepper. Watch out now. So this is the big part that is any sort of a, you can mess this up by making them too salty. You can mess this up by making them too peppery. And so this really kind of has to just come down to your own trial and error. But remember, you can't take salt off at the same time. Get a big cut of meat. I like quite a bit of salt on it. And that's just me. And I've got it figured out to where my family likes what I'm producing. So we'll hit these with salt and black pepper. And in order to make these, I like to use the sous vide method. Now, I used to just go out and grill them. And then I found uh, sous vide everything is a YouTube channel. And Guga, I guess the guy's name, and uh, I tell you, I, I sat and watched that channel, and I, I actually just listened to it quite a bit while I was typing up police reports, and uh, I, I'd work up a hunger. Salt both sides. One time I forgot to salt one side, so my sister likes to ride me like sea biscuit over that one. See, about did it right there. And our black pepper. I try to be pretty conservative with the black pepper. Again, you'll have to do it to your taste. Because the problem is if you get too much in there, I like black pepper, but I don't like black pepper beef jerky. Um, so it's just, I like the flavor, but it's too much. Once that's done, if you're going to sous vide them, then you'll need to vacuum seal them. I used to use a vacuum sealer that would just suck the air out of the bags. Uh, I got tired of fooling around with that one because I was getting beef juice and stuff that would get in there and uh, in my, my seams. And I didn't care for it, so I took the hit and uh, got a big chamber sealer. The nice part with using a, a chamber sealer is one, it does a much better job, but two, you can use it for other things. So I smoked a pork shoulder and I took all the extra pulled pork that we had and I put them in these vacuum sealed bags. We actually just froze that and then for lunch, um, the wife heated that up, she put it in a glass dish and then put, put that in the toaster oven. She put a little chicken stock in there and it heats up great. So it's, it's a really good way to, uh, you know, if you want to smoke something on the weekend or something and you don't have a bunch of people over or if you intentionally want the leftovers, that's something that we've done and it's worked out pretty good. I dropped a vacuum seal bag here. I'm gonna have to pick it up. Trying to be one-handed business. My camera lady usually gets to be the other hand. All right, so once you've got all these bagged up, we're gonna start with the porterhouse. You wanna come on over here? We'll take a look at our vacuum sealer. So the way these work is pretty cool. It actually, I'm gonna show you something that you gotta watch out for. So in this bag, see here, this piece of meat was just so big that I was gonna get and touch the edges of it, right? So we're gonna end up getting a heat seal through here. So I'm just gonna run a paper towel across through here and clean this bag up so that I shouldn't have any problems getting a good seal there. I'm gonna take this guy, put him in here.
and we're going to go ahead and hit the auto vac and seal. It's going to vacuum for 60 seconds and it'll go to seal for seven. So we're going to do this with each stake. And the cool part with this thing you watch is it looks like it expanded and it kind of came out towards us a little bit. And as that happens, you'll actually see some of the, uh, the liquids in the stake kind of start to bubble. There they are. And what it's done is it's removed the air from that chamber. And then when it reintroduces the air, it just clings to the stake. It's pretty neat. But the other versions of that vacuum sealer, you know, any of those juices that you had in the stake, I always had to kind of fight them getting toward that heat seam and, and trying to keep all the, get, keep the juices where they were supposed to be. And, and that way I could get a good seal on that bag. Five, four, three, two, one. Here it goes. Look at that. All right, we'll go ahead and take it out now. So, because I do sous vide, I package these steaks like this, and so I went and bought these fresh intentionally. I still have beef in the freezer, uh, but I bought these specifically so I could do this because we don't have the kids tonight. So. I will actually package all of these with their seasonings and then I'll throw them in the freezer. Now, when you don't need to throw them in the freezer, you put them in your sous vide unit here, right? And I can put them in the sous vide unit directly from the freezer. All right, so we finished vacuum sealing everything. I didn't figure you needed to sit around and watch that because while we were vacuum sealing, we were able to clean the counter off a little bit. Uh, but one of the cool things about this particular method of, of preparation is you can actually go out and buy the primals, or if you go to your butcher, they might actually trim it for you, but you can buy the primal, have them trim it, or you'll trim it yourself, uh, and you end up with vacuum sealed steaks that are ready to go in the freezer. Now, the thing with the sous vide is when I usually have them fresh, not frozen, I let them spend about 90 minutes in the sous vide, which is this guy right here. Now, if they are frozen, I usually let them go about two hours. And the temperature I've kind of set on, for me anyway, is about 127 degrees, 127 and a half. Uh, reason being, they're not terribly rare looking when they come out. So I have people that come over that have you know, various preferences when you serve different people, right? You have friends over, you know, you got some guy that, you know, bless his heart, right? And I mean that in a Southern manner, okay? Bless that guy's heart, but he wants a well-done steak. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say that really. Um, but as that guy wants his steak well done, <clears throat> um, you know, if he gets a piece of, of rare meat and it looks red, uh, looks very pink, then, you know, he may be apt to turn his nose up at it and, and not enjoy it. And really, when we have guests over, I want them to enjoy uh, what it is that we're serving. So that's about the best middle ground I've found. You can play with your temperatures, you can play with your sear method, which we'll get into after the sous vide, and figure out what works best for you. But for a pretty much surefire way to make steaks, particularly this bone in piece, because the bone acts kind of like a heat sink. You know, normally you get a porterhouse or a T bone, and the outsides here, if you look here, the outsides. When you cut into one of those steaks, it ends up being like well done here and maybe rare here and you were looking for medium rare, right? Well, the problem with that is the bone acts kind of like a heat sink and this meat out here takes that heat a lot faster. So a good part with the sous vide is you, can't mess, you really can't mess that up and overcook it. The other part is, you know, you guys out there that have tried to cook fillets, they're pretty doggone difficult to do on a grill and actually get them to where you want them because they're such a thick cut of meat. If you're getting little teeny tiny fillets, that's on you. But you get a nice big 10, 11 ounce fillet. And remember I said buy the primals. So I'll go get an entire beef tenderloin and I'll trim that up and then end up with beef fillets. And then I have the trimmings that I vacuum seal as well. And I end up making it like its own steak. It's, oh, it's wonderful. So, 
you can do all those different things with this, this method and it makes it pretty convenient. So when I have company over, I don't have to sit here and do the seasoning in front of them. All right, they come over in the afternoon and we're having steaks for dinner. This is already done. This is what I do when I, all right, baby, I'm gonna start the sous vide. Ready, here we go. I'm gonna put my little unit in here. Now this was all bought off of the Amazons. Whether you love the Amazons or not, I bought this stuff off the Amazons before they did things that made me like them less. But we're going to get our steak in here, and we may need to actually rotate him just a little bit. Because I want the water all over him. And this water is going to end up getting to be 127 degrees, which is hot. But for those of you guys that are in Iraq watching this right now, you know that it's hot and it's doable. <laughs> Barely. So we're gonna add a little bit more water to this guy. I would fill it up all the way first, but once you put the meat in there, you've got to count for the displacement. That's gonna be good enough. So I'm gonna cover him up. And this is really just me uh, figuring out what's gonna keep him down in the water. Put the lid on it. And now, 90 minutes from now, these will be done. Now, my understanding of the way this sous vide works is they actually pasteurize the meat. So generally what you're doing is you're trying to get some USDA food safe, whatever temperature, so that it's killed all of the possible microbiome in that thing and destroyed all your flavor. And with this, instead of using a high temperature for an instant to kill any foodborne illness, potential parasites, you know, pathogens, then, I'm using big words, then we're gonna use a lower temperature, but now we have time. So these are gonna spend the next hour and a half in here. And while they spend the hour and a half in here, my preferred method to put a crust and a sear on these steaks, because you'll see when they come out, they don't look good. They look actually quite unappealing, uh, but these steaks, I like to use charcoal, and then I'll put them on the charcoal grill for 90 seconds a side. They look like a purely grilled steak, but they come off sous vide. All right, so one of the things that I kind of thought might be good to demonstrate to you is basically, this is, these are frozen, uh, but this says seasoned filet, I labeled them, uh, and then I actually weighed them. So it's one pound, 2.6 ounces. And that's just kind of so I can determine, look, if you can't tell, I like to eat a lot, okay? I've been eating my whole life. I'm really good at it. But mama doesn't eat as much as I do. So I went and measured these out. That way I kind of knew if, if, if is it, am I serving me? Am I serving, you know, another grown man? Or do we have another little woman that eats like a bird? So, but the nice part here is these are already seasoned. I can literally walk down to the freezer, flop them in here, two hours later we're good, and then I can go ahead and, and just sear them on the charcoal grill. I've done the cast iron method where I have put cast iron griddle, or a, a cast iron pan on the gas stove, and then I was using normal butter, ghee is better. The clarified butter, it's got a higher smoke point, so um, then I've put ghee in there, and I've done where we, we actually grow fresh rosemary right outside the kitchen window here, um, where I've put a little rosemary in there before. I've done garlic. Um, there's all sorts of different things you can do based off of your tastes and your preferences. If you like steaks, of, I, uh, I said steak sauce. If you like steak sauce, um, sorry. If that's what you do, um, then you may want something that's not quite as basic as I do, all right? I, if you get much past salt and black pepper for me, then we're starting to get a little bit too fancy and you're taking away from the cow that spent a lot of time making itself taste so delicious. So I kind of want to honor that cow and eat it the way God intended. Uh, but if for some reason somebody overdoes one, you, know, you may want to add a little bit of that extra um, and a little bit of the butter on there, like a Peter Luger steakhouse kind of deal, that's not too bad. It doesn't overpower the steak, um, but it, 
when you finish it with charcoal, it's really not quite necessary to me. Again, your mileage may vary. The other thing I've seen, and I've actually done it before, is I've gotten the blowtorch out. And uh, a torch that one might use to solder some copper pipes or set off fireworks if it's legal in your jurisdiction, and even if it's not, or start a fire or whatever you're doing, uh, just a, a butane or propane blowtorch. Um, I've actually sat in the house and hit them with that. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite the appearance, um, but it does the job. And uh, again, that was off of, I learned that off of sous vide everything, that guy Guga. And then I actually bought the cooking torch and that works pretty well as well, but I can't get past throwing that little bit of charcoal on there. So your mileage may vary on however it is your tastes and preferences go for your finishing piece. You're gonna have to figure that part out. But if you're one of those people that has an issue overcooking steaks, I just can't quite get them right. Every time I get a piece out, it's like shoe leather or, or roofing shingle, then this right here is the method for you. Hit that sous vide up. And also, it's ridiculously convenient. It allows you to hang around your guests a little bit and actually have a conversation. And then you get to go do the man thing where you stand around with maybe an adult beverage, picking a piece of meat up occasionally on, around a grill. You, know, you still can do that, but it's kind of limited to just our sear time. So, but it doesn't make you a slave over the grill. And it allows these big cuts, these big thick cuts to get done perfectly the entire way throughout. Now, my beautiful wife informed me that I forgot to talk about one of the other cool things with this sous vide is, so I had these fresh steaks here, right? Sometimes, and I, it, it does make a difference, how long before you season them to where you cook them. These are going to spend 90 minutes inside a vacuum sealed bag where that salt has an opportunity to actually penetrate and get into that meat. One of the settings that that particular vacuum sealer has is one for a marinade. Well, it, it will intentionally remove the air, right? So it allows that meat to kind of expand. And then it puts more air back into the chamber, kind of forcing some of that marinade in the meat. And it repeats that cycle over and over again. So one of the things that happens when you do this sous vide, I found my salt goes a lot farther than it did when I didn't use the sous vide method. So if you're gonna let it sit in here and enjoy its own juices with that salt, be a little bit cautious beforehand. Remember, you can add salt after it comes off. I know it's not quite the same, but you can't take the salt out of it if you over salt it to begin with. And especially if you get a filet or something like that, you know, this, this porterhouse, you get a nice expensive cut of meat the last thing you want to do is, is ruin it and make it taste like it's been preserved with salt instead of wonderfully prepared. So it's time to take our steaks out of the sous vide. So this is 127 degrees. It is very warm, not terrible. When you stick your hand in there because, you know, I just did it earlier, You've been in the Middle East. So this is what these things look like when they come out. We'll just have to wipe the counter off but they're kind of gray looking. They don't really look good. It's like, you really want me to eat that? And yes, yes I do. But we're not done yet. So we cut them open. And I take our steaks and I lay them on paper towel. We'll cut the porterhouse open, and lay them on the paper towel next to our strip steak. And now doesn't that look wonderful? All right, I'm done. Do you like it? Ah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm going to grab another set of paper towels here. So if you want them to get a good sear, just pat them, pat them dry. I mean, it doesn't have to be ridiculous, but get a lot of the moisture off of them. And then I will use this same tray when I go downstairs here and we're going to sear them on the charcoal grill. Now I've already got the charcoal ready, so we need to get moving. All right, we're right here at the charcoal grill. This is cold. I don't like, I like grill marks just because they're aesthetically pleasing. 
but I don't like too many grill marks. Watch the pillar here. So we're gonna come over here and grab our steaks. And now I'll put them on this and it's, it's cold, but I am gonna put them straight on top of these hot coals because I'm going for a sear. And now we're gonna wait for 90 seconds. So it's important that you like, share, and subscribe. We're trying to grow the channel. And if you try this, I wanna know how it turns out for you. We're gonna cut so you don't have to wait the whole 90 seconds in between flips. So we've had our 90 seconds. Let's go ahead and see. I'm using the charcoal that's a cowboy lump charcoal. We're gonna have to get a little, a little more on that part. But the best part is it still absorbs this smoke. You see the smoke coming out of here? It absorbs the smoke flavor from the charcoal. And so you get that salt, the black pepper, added smoke flavor. It's gonna be good, y'all. All right, go take a break, 90 seconds. All right, our second spat of 90 seconds. Let's see how we did. All right, we're getting a little bit a little bit closer there to where I like, so. But I'm gonna give this porterhouse probably, I don't know, something like maybe 30 more seconds. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more time on here. That's it. They're coming off. The sears for flavor and color. For presentation, these don't look gray anymore. They don't look gross. They are, that's gonna be good, y'all. Let's grab this strip off the grill. Your times and your, your uh, extensions, if you need to add it and, and uh, let it go for a little longer, that's gonna be based off of your fire. You know, it, I did charcoal, right? So it bases off of you know, how much charcoal did you use? I used one of the charcoal chimneys full this time. That was it, and it was a cowboy lump charcoal and it probably burned a little longer than I would have, uh, I would have found ideal. All right, y'all, so these things are ready. Um, I can kind of hardly wait. I'm going to go ahead and cut into them. I'm going to cut next to the bone. This is not how I would normally cut these, but for demonstration purposes, this is how I'm going to do it. So all the way from our fat cap, all the way in, it's the same level of doneness with a little crust on the outside. This results in all of your steak being great. Not some of it on the outside being all well done. And then once you get here toward the bone, it being, oh my goodness, that's the best part. I'm gonna cut the wife strip in half. These are gonna be good, y'all. Now remember what I said. I select the temperature at 127 and a half in the time that I do, because there are some people that are not going to put up with the coloration, okay? And it's the coloration. But these steaks, they're gonna be juicy, they're gonna be good. There's already the juice on the plate. I mean, it's, they're gonna be good, y'all. Like to thank Bourbon Barrel Beef. Uh, they stayed open, we, I went in there and it was like two minutes to close and they humored me. Uh, so thank you to Bourbon Barrel Beef. That's where we got these because my steer is not ready yet, but when he's ready to fulfill his purpose as a steer, it's probably where I'm gonna go so he can fulfill his purpose as a steer and wind up like this. I need you to like, share, and subscribe. If you try to replicate this, remember, I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear in your comment section, tell me how, it, how did it turn out for you? Was it awesome? Did something go wrong? Share that, we'll see what we can get squared away. Thanks y'all. The wife seemed to think that I needed to put something on my plate other than just steak. Well, I obliged her. Look, I've got broccoli.